Alrighty, folks, what's going on? This is Matt here for Dark One Linux Tech and Game, where it's the fusion of Linux technology and gaming. And we are going to be talking about a video that came across my feed that I found totally interesting. It's nice and short, which is also great. Uh, it is about them choosing Linux and why they did, and simply titled Why I Choose Linux. I always find these videos interesting because you never know the reasons. It's going to be pragmatic, philosophical, somewhere in between. I always enjoy hearing people's reasons they jump to Linux. So let's roll into it and see what homie has to say. Okay guys, it's story time. Today I wanna to share with you the story of my Linux journey and why I chose Linux as a daily operating system. All right, so flashback to 2007, I'd got my first real laptop. I got an old Dell Inspiron before that, and it ran in Windows XP, which I considered to be the de facto standard for NT kernel operating systems. <clears throat> Windows, if you will, but this new laptop had Windows Vista on it. I know what you're thinking. Oh, Vista. Vista was garbage. Vista was not garbage. I'll tell you what was garbage. The computers that ran Vista were garbage. Those of you who were actually there know what I'm talking about. They had the little sticker on them that said made for XP, Vista capable, and oh boy, was I a naive child thinking I was going to be playing Halo 2 Vista on one of these things. That computer ran slower than hell. It had integrated graphics, it had 512 megabytes of RAM, only a fourth of the recommended 2 gigabytes of RAM for Vista at the time, Core 2 Solo, which had a single core in it. I knew there had to be another option. I googled, how could I make my computer faster, as a dumb dumb 7 year old, and eventually ran across some forums on the internet that did not give me the answer, but they did give me an alternative. Ubuntu, I said, what's that? As I read the instructions on, I learned that I could install something other than Windows that would make better use of my computer's resources. Eventually, after trial and error, I burned an installation CD of Ubuntu and was amazed to see that upon restarting the computer with the CD, I was actually in Ubuntu, unaware that Ubuntu was even part of a greater collective of the GNU slash Linux project. I eventually made my way through the installer and Ubuntu was what my laptop ran on. That's not to say I didn't meet problems, however. I quickly learned that the games I had played oftentimes did not work on my operating system. Halo 2 Vista was out of the question, and out of my budget anyways. And other games like GTA San Andreas, for instance, did not work either. Although eventually I learned that I was using something called Linux, and that games with builds of those were playable to me, most notable to me was Doom 3 and Quake 4, one day I had stumbled upon the Wine Project. Was this the answer to my predicament? Okay, so I wanted to give him some time to tell his story. There, there's really no pause portion here. So, yeah, it, it, this is a lot of the story. You know, it's uh, people looking for the alternative to to what they perceive as a problem. So if you have a tool, be it Windows or Mac or Linux or, you know, whatever, from a hardware or software point of view, if you have a tool that isn't doing what you need, how you need it, etc. You're going to look for alternatives to that tool. And that's totally fine. Um, I, I can't rag on that because I'm very much uh, not in that use case situation, what he's talking about. But as far as why I jumped on Linux, I jumped out on it out of curiosity. Like that aspect of what he's talking about is very much very accurate. Um, for me, it was just more about you know, 1999, you hear this thing called Linux, and you're like, oh, there's a free CD at the time. I believe um, it was either Mandrake or Red Hat. I don't remember what version. Uh, Might have been 5. I don't know. It was not whatever came out in 99. Either way, I was like, cool. It's something that's not Windows. Let's try it. So I get the curiosity aspect of it, too. So Linux or any OS or tool is going to be looked at as if it's not doing it for you, then okay, we'll try something different. Uh, as far as the Windows Vista stuff, yeah, <laughs> um, there was a few different things. The fact Microsoft allowed that Vista compatible, Vista capable crap to go on shitty hardware, totally not cool. But also, Vista was not good and i'm speaking as someone who had more high-end hardware at the time um you know when you when you pick up a new nvidia card and your drivers don't fucking work um 
now that's on the video, but the uh, the experience of that taints the rest of the experience that you can get with you know even the most high end hardware. I mean, like for me, I had I want to say I had quadruple the the recommended spec at the time. So uh, you know, you're talking eight gig system, uh, like it's so like astronomical to see where we're at now, but um, I had way more than the the minimum system requirements and the hardware that OEM sold to consumers for that Vista experience was shit. The support Microsoft gave and didn't hammer down on, and this is the difference between what they're doing now and what they did then. It was also shit. The problem I have with it now is now they're locking it out based on TPM and all the other stuff. Um, so th- there's a world of difference, but the journey that you're you're going on is a lot of similarities. And yeah, you'll as you go through it, you will definitely learn that there are some things that just don't work. It's no different than if you went to Mac. There are just some shit that ain't going to work. Or if you're from a Mac and you're going to Windows, there's just some shit that ain't going to work. You find the alternatives. That's always all it is. Okay, I'm going to let them keep going and cooking. I installed it and tried to play GTA San Andreas and failed miserably. Wine definitely wasn't kid friendly, but you know what was? Play on Linux was. I installed that and was blown away that I can now play GTA San Andreas in all its 15 FPS 640 by 480p glory. At long last, I had achieved my goal. I was a PC gamer. Eventually, a few years had passed and I had a friend over at my house. I was showing him something on my computer and he saw my desktop. He goes, What's that? Is that Windows? That looks like computers in the movies. Staring at him in disbelief, I had asked him to show me his laptop, and sure enough, he had a totally different desktop experience than mine. He had Windows 7. He said that he had never seen anything like what I had on my laptop. Apparently, what I thought was a norm in the computer world turned out to be a huge minority. I started to learn more about Linux, and eventually I came across Richard Stallman's speeches and essays about free and open source software and the philosophy behind it, as well as his teachings about digital privacy and security. Although at the time I didn't understand it all, which came in time, what I understood was good people work to give me what I have, and from then on, I did what I could to try and help them. I wanted Linux to be the top, the king of the world. I wanted everyone to love and understand Linux like I did. Keep in mind at a time where this would definitely not be as feasible as today. And as such, I became a proponent for the free software movement and learned to submit bug reports and I even did a little bit of programming along the way and if I had commits upstream to some of my favorite software. I would even... Yeah, so... Uh, all I'm going to say about Stallman, I like the base you contributed. Everything else I don't like about him. Uh, so, you know, that, that's my whole take and I'll just leave it at that. Uh, I think he's a terrible representation for the, you know, he's not the person you want to cart out in front of a crowd to be the speaker. He has shown that multiple times. Um, but yeah, like it, when you start, this is where the, the, the switch as he shows goes from pragmatism because you're just using it as a tool and then you find out the philosophical end of stuff it's a balancing act um honestly uh, for for me i always tend to err on the more pragmat pragmatist side of things and when it comes to like the proponent or evangelizing which is a term i fucking hate that some of the community use but um yeah like if you can contribute back like people are doing this on their time some people are doing it on their dime so the least you can do as a user is contribute back in some way shape or form doesn't matter how you decide to do that bug reports time effort money whatever documentation it doesn't have to be strictly code and unfortunately sometimes people don't understand that i know for me like I support the OSs that I use, be it through Patreon or whatever donation way they will take money. Um, Because for me, 
I have no, like, I can contribute bug reports and that stuff, which I do, but as far as fixing bugs and all that stuff, uh, let, get, let somebody who uh, is more capable of it than me. That That is my take. So for me, it's like I, I donate to Garuda. I donate to Chimera OS. Those are the two big OSs that I generally support. Um, there are projects that I've donated to. I've donated to uh, Kane Live. I've donated to various other projects that I, I consistently use. OBS is another one. Uh, I find I've bought crit of, off uh, <laughs> off the Windows Store, and I don't like the Windows Store for my Windows system. But I know the money goes to developers. I bought it off. Uh, I believe crit also is on Steam. And I know it's in my, my library. I know that. So the, there's just stuff where we should support what we use and helps the ecosystem. Unfortunately, we just don't do that a lot. How you want to contribute and support that, totally a personal choice. And I think having that choice of how you support it is definitely a big win as opposed to more of the commercial transaction point of view when it comes to like a windows or mac kind of system generally speaking as far as like the consumer interaction part which i think lennox has a better base on because people can contribute not just with their wallet they can they can determine how they contribute and i think that's important even donate some of my scarcely given money to these projects because I wanted to show appreciation for this because up until then I had no idea that the devs were doing this not out of a desire for money but out of a love of the community. A love for your digital rights and it changed my view on the world forever. It really touched me and from then on out I want to do whatever it is that I could to help. In all my years of using Linux I went from Ubuntu to Fedora to various other Linux distros all the way to where I am today as an Arch user. What matters in the end isn't the choice of distro, that's the surface of it. We are a community at heart, and at the end of the day, all that matters is that we work with each other to meet not only our goals, but the goals of everyone. And that goal is to bring a truly free operating system to the masses. Thank you all for listening to my story. If you liked it, then please like and subscribe. Share my channel around if you know people who are thinking about making a switch to Linux, and have an awesome, wonderful rest of your day. So generally, I have no complaints about the, the overall content of what he's saying. He, um, <sighs> Stupid thing. Whether or not something should be free, like it, it depends on how you want to view that. Something like that, I'm going to tell that what we can do from a marketing perspective is it's about control. Yep. Linux puts the personal back in computing realistically because you control the system you control everything from pre-builds distros or you can go download and use linux from scratch or nix os or you know arch or whatever slackware totally your choice and yes the distros matter but not in the way that the community makes them think that they matter this is the difference they matter to the demographics they cater to they do not matter because it gives the same level of control base control that users should have on a piece of software and not dictated by a company as an example of what I mean, something like if I want to use the app image for Cinelera GG and just use that app image, I don't have to have a company like Adobe or say there was a company behind Cinelera GG that said, nope, you can't activate that particular version anymore. Well, guess what? Adobe did that with fucking Brazil and their creative cloud. Uh, Adobe, I think it was Creative Suite 6. They said, yeah, we're not re-authenticating that anymore. Cool. So uh, there's certain things in certain ways that certain companies move that something like Linux allows to counterbalance that and once you understand that and like when i say and talk about control of your software and your hardware and that stuff it gives the person the choice of how much control do they give up how much do they like convenience versus privacy etc it gives that person the control 
that they deserve, need, and should have by default because it's up to them and it's a personal choice. Again, um, and the distro on the top, depending on your demographic, is when it's going to matter. At the core, like freedom, you know, evangelist, pragmatist, proponent kind of crap, it doesn't matter. But it matters when it's a technical reason. It matters when it's a use case reason. That's when distros matter. Not blanket retarded statements like dumbasses like Chris Titus will be like, uh, distros don't matter. Not dipshit they do. You just don't understand fucking demographics. Neither do a lot of distros. Um, so it totally agree with a lot of what he's saying. Uh, again, I'm more of a proponent of selling, selling and marketing Linux as the alternative based on how you want to control your computing. Whereas having a company dictate and control it, just look at Apple and how it decides, you know, <laughs> from top to bottom, what you, um, from top to bottom, what you're allowed to do and not do. Microsoft's going the same way with like windows 11 and the nag screens that you're going to be getting here shortly. So it's, it, it's all relative as far as what you're going to get, but, Overall, I uh, enjoyed hearing the story, enjoyed hearing his track record and how he falls into it. And yeah, the rabbit hole starts with the curiosity. Not going to lie. And with that, let me know what your guys' first distro was. Uh, are you a pragmatist? Are you a proponent of free software? Fall somewhere in the middle? Let me know. Comments and stuff down below. Comment or subscribe. I will catch you guys on the flip. Any gala, Patreon, all that crap is down below. Peace.